photosynthesis is like sort of the fundamental energy harvesting process for life on Earth. And trees, trees like are the plants that have figured out how to get dibs <laughs> on the incoming sunlight, right? Other plants often end up living in the shade if they're in an area that has trees. Um, and then the other thing is the, it's not so much the number of elements that you have in a system, but the number of functional interactions between elements. It's not how much money you have in an area that makes the economy prosper, but how much it's circulating. If you got one rich guy and he's got a thousand years worth of silver in his basement, you can still have a really shitty local economy, right? Mm -hmm. so, um, so we're looking at the functional interactions. But what does, it, what does it mean that a tree is offering habitat to birds, for example? It means that the bird is also bringing in seeds, nitrogen, all kinds of things that are feeding back to the tree and feeding back to the larger system. One of the things that, that forests are at many, many levels is an information exchange just as much as a nutrient exchange. So if you're going to attract bees, how are you going to attract bees to your flowers? What are you going to use? If you're a plant and you have a limited set, what are you going to use? Color, light, infrared, ultraviolet. So you're, you're exchanging data across all these mediums as well. The flowers are talking to the bees. Not only that, the flowers are giving the bees a landing pad. They specifically want this bee to land on this part of the flower and feed from here so they point everything into that flower giving them clear signals but that goes on in everything in, in all of your in interactions in here between all of the plants in the system it also kind of goes on between the planet and the sun or planet in the atmosphere right so if you look at Cretaceous era systems What's a commonality in a Cretaceous era system? Dinosaur plants from the age of flowers, right? This is long, long ago. Yeah. So there's a commonality in here that I'm trying to point out that's, that's still a communication system. They all have shiny leaf tops. Everybody knows what a magnolia looks like. It's shiny on one side and dull on the other. Well, why would it be that way? What's it doing? It's reflecting. When we're talking about permaculture, you're talking about looking at the details. If you're in an open plain area, Montana, one of the things that I loved about going into the lowlands of Montana, it cracks me up every time we go down there because most of the, most of the plants have a shiny surface. The upper part of the leaf is waxy, it's shiny, it's reflecting the sun. So you've got these communication pathways that are moving up and down and across all of these systems and they're transporting nutrients. Well, if this thing over here can't get nutrients, what's it, what, what does it need? needs to figure out a way to get nutrients to it. So you go and signal the birds, and the birds bring in nutrients, and you go and talk to the, talk to the things that are living on you. In the rainforest, you see massive die-offs in, in various areas of a tree. So up at the very top, the lichens might die off, and all of a sudden you get this rain of lichens down onto the forest floor. Well, those lichens are, oftentimes it's at the very top, so they're the nitrogen fixers. And they'll just suddenly <laughs> die off and fall off the tree. You're kind of like, okay, um, why? And you go and you do a soil sample there and you'll find it's nitrogen poor. And you see that kind of communication. This is also data exchange between upper and lower, side to side through the whole thing. So where does a, where does a tree get the carbon? If a tree has got so much good carbon for composting, where does it find that carbon? Right. So, so if you if it was pulling thing if it was pulling the carbon from the ground, you'd expect that over time a tree would make a hole, right? Generally speaking, trees tend to make hills rather than holes. They're bringing that carbon out of the air. They will pull other things from the ground. What do they pull from the ground? Minerals, water. Sometimes things that they, you know, like like what they got from the fun fungi market. Not, a, not everybody intuitively gets that about a tree. And sugars are a storage mechanism for that energy, right? They're, they're going to be feeding <coughs> off of those when they don't get light, and other things are going to feed off of those sugars. They'll concentrate the sugars into little packages, like, 
I have something you might like if you if if you have if you have a lot of sugar, would you take my seeds somewhere really cool and put them with some <coughs> fertilizer? If you put it so nicely. <laughs> yeah. So you'll see trees that are really giving. Like they've re they've created some really attractive little ways to move their DNA with with really beautiful little packages of food that are tailored to particular creatures. Uh, you'll see really oily like like high oil, high protein fruits that attract like avocados. I'm just imagining the creature that caused avocados to evolve that wanted that big of a nutrient package in order to distribute a seed that big. In respiration or in uh, photosynthesis, that means this arrow is going this way. This is a backwards and forwards uh, reaction. So photosynthesis is here and respiration is here. This is the equation of life. Throw, so a, di throw a day and night in there too, maybe. Yeah, yeah so yeah, trees yeah. are going to photosynthesize because they have the solar energy input. They need that energy. And then when that solar energy combines with them taking up carbon dioxide and a bunch of water, they do photosynthesis and they create sugar. C6H12O6 is the general sugar. Simple There's a sugar. lot of simple sugars with that formula. And oxygen, they give off oxygen. But when we we, we only respire, and they respire at night when there's no solar energy. We take sugar and we take oxygen from the air, and it goes and creates our respiration, this off our you know water vapor and carbon dioxide. And this is that what this is the, the two byproducts and of that is ATP, adeno triphosphate, which is the cellular energy. So that's why they put up their mechanical energy and heat. heat. One of the things about all of these fun equations and things we're doing up here is that unless you're going to get really, really detailed in them, and many times you don't need to get that detailed in them, all of the rest of this stuff kind of gets in the way of looking at the thing that's happening that you need to work with. I, I don't know anybody who, who, plans a, uh, who, who plans a permaculture site starting at the ATP level. Okay, <laughs> or even better, the lactic acid level, which is the burning of the ATP, turning it into, ener into energy for you. We start oh, somewhere up here. So Erica didn't do any uh, physics equations or sit down and do the math. She had a fundamental standing, understanding of what was going on, but she didn't need to acknowledge all the things that would have to happen to do it. So you can do stuff, and you don't need to understand the processes that are going on behind. Like we're doing the calculations, but um, could I could I write those calculations out for you? No. Do I know them innately in every fibre of my being? Yep. 